and I'm going to be your chess coach for today. Um, I, hope, I hope you're excited as I am uh, for today's lesson. So basically uh, today we're going to be talking about the one and only uh, Vladimir Kremnik. Um, he's a 14th world champion um, and I picked a game he played against the one and only Gary Kasparov. So that name must ring a bell. Um, if, if it doesn't, well, he was the former world champion. And now, of course, uh, that's the one and only Magnus Carlsen. So, yes, this game was basically played um, a long time ago between uh, these two legends um, in Dos Hermanas in uh, Spain in 1996. So this tournament um, featured 10 of the strongest players in the world. And unfortunately now Kramnik has retired from chess, but he's currently playing um, this ongoing tournament on Chess24 called Legends of Chess. Um, so we'll be analyzing a very fun attacking and tactical game. Um, so if you love tactics, well, then this stream is perfect for you. And we will learn how to attack. Also, we will learn that you shouldn't be too afraid to sacrifice a piece in order to weaken your opponent's king. And also, um, you'll, tr you'll learn uh, how to try to use all of your pieces um, whenever you can, because it's very important to cooperate all of your pieces into the chess game. So without further ado, let's hop into the game. Um, uh, also, guys, if you have any questions um, throughout the game, you can also always ask me. Um, if there, there are certain moves you don't understand. Just leave it in the chat and uh, we will look at it together. All right. OK, so we'll start off with uh, D4. Gary Kasparov started off with um, D4. D4 is known to be a very positional opening. Um, if you're, if you're not a d4 player, you could also play moves like c4 or e4, um, maybe even f4. Um, you can play basically whatever you want. Um, so d4 is basically known to be a very positional play, um, which means that you want to develop your pieces slowly but securely. You don't want to rush into things. You just want to set up a nice, clear position and then slowly um, improve it. And if you're... Like me, I've never played d4, I'm an e4 player, if you like to play e4, e4 has much, much more options, um, black can do many things, such as e5, c5, um, whatever you want. So, um, Gary Kasparov decided to go for d4, and um, Vladimir Kramnik uh, reacted with d5. The reason behind d4 and d5 um, is because they want to uh, take control of the central squares. So d4 is uh, watching over e5. Oh, let me draw an arrow. e5 and d5 is uh, looking over uh, e4, but also c4. Okay, so now white goes c4. Um, if you're not very familiar with uh, d4 setups, um, then c4 might sound might look a bit crazy not sound it might look it might look a bit crazy because well black um, can just simply take take the pawn because this pawn is not protected as you can see so for black you might think okay but now i can just take the pawn because well it's unprotected and i'm just a pawn up well not exactly because white can just go e4 and look at this White has total control over the central squares. White has the pawn on d4, white has a pawn on e4, and they're both looking over d5 and e5. So you're basically giving up the entire sensor. So d takes c4 could be played, but that's not something um, most of the people play. Uh, Kramnik went for c6 in this position. You could also go for a move like e6 or maybe knight of 6, whatever you want. Um, this is all based on your personal preferences. And c6 is called the Slav. So if you haven't heard of this opening, here you have it. It's called the Slav. Um, so the meaning behind c6 is basically, well, this bishop 
can still go to f5 or g4 but when you play a move like e6 then you're blocking this bishop so that won't be possible so that's why um if you play a move like c4 you're keeping your options open so you still can play e6 whenever you want but you can also still move your bishop out to f5 or g4 whatever you want so now why just plays a normal development move um, knight c3 um, is, he's just uh, trying to develop his pieces and that's what black is trying to do as well knight, uh, black just goes knight f6 and white uh, goes knight f3 these are just normal opening uh, development moves and next we're going um, e6 black didn't decide to go um, bishop f5 or um, moving the bishop out black decides to go e6 and securing the center securing the d5 pawn protecting everything nicely and safely okay so now um white goes e3 with the idea of moving this bishop out to either e2 let me draw an arrow to move either to e2 or to d3 um he's blocking the bishop on c1 but i guess he uh he can still develop it with uh, b3 and bishop b2. Um, e4, d4, is that possible? Um, I mean, in the opening, e4, d4 is, is definitely um, possible. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it totally depends on um, your personal preferences. But here we're looking at um, d4. Okay, so e3 is played. Now black goes for another development move. Um, knight bd7. He could also have played a move like bishop e7 or bishop d6 um, just to um, develop his bishop on uh, f8. He could go to e7 for example and then castle. But of course knight bd7 is also a good move just developing his pieces because development is key, it's very crucial. Um, you want to develop your pieces as fast as you can why well you probably want to castle uh, at some point so if you leave your king in the center well that's not a very good idea because it's going to be very vulnerable so it's good to uh try to develop your pieces as fast as you can and that's that's what both sides are doing basically these are just very normal normal opening moves and now white goes bishop d3 um, on the next move, white wants to castle, so he's just moving his bishop out of its way, and then he will be able to castle. Okay, now, um, very odd, black goes d takes c4. Why is it odd? Because in the beginning I said um, d takes c4 um, is not very common, because white creates a, a nice um, free, free square on e4, because now white can push e4, right? Now the bishop is attacked. So um, the bishop will have to move now. So white can go e4 straight away. He has to deal with this threat first. So yeah, I guess white has to take this pawn, right? Okay, he does that. Now we go b5. Um, attacking the bishop again. Now the bishop has to move. He still can't play e4. He has to deal with this threat. So white decides to go bishop d3. Um, you could even go bishop e2, whatever you want, uh, but K Gary Kasparov decided to go to uh, d3. Okay, so these are all um, theoretical uh, moves, and they're both just developing everything. It looks okay for both sides. Now, uh, black goes bishop b7, and uh, white castles, of course. Um, okay, now, uh, I have a question for you guys. Um, black goes a6. So, why does black play this little quiet move? Like, it doesn't really do anything. Um, I mean, the b5 pawn is already protected by the c6 pawn. So, why would you play a6? Why would you do that? Can you tell me why? <clears throat> Can you tell me why? <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
If no one knows, I will just tell you myself. Okay, I'll just tell you guys myself. So, a6 is, of course, protecting the b5 pawn. But the idea behind this, behind it is uh, to play c5. And the reason why you can't play c5 straight away is because, of course, this... Um, to go rook a7? Ah, no. Um, no, um, in these positions, you don't want to play your rook to a7. It's not doing much on a, on a7. Uh, let me show you. Um... You would want to put your rook on um, more active squares, such as c8, for example. c8 is a good square for your rook, because if you put your rook on c8, you're just basically controlling this entire file, and then maybe you, can, you still can push c5. So um, rook a7 isn't very common, um, because it's not doing much there. But um, thank you for your suggestion. Um, no. So the idea behind a6 is to go c5. And c5... Uh, well, sorry. The reason, behi reason behind c5 is because if white goes e4, which he does, of course. If white goes e4, then white has total control over the center, as you can see. White has very nice uh, pawns on d4, on e4. Why is even castled? Black didn't didn't do that yet. Um, white's pieces are nicely developed. There's a bishop on d3. There's a knight on f3. There's a knight on c3. Everything is very nicely developed, and black will have to look for a counterattack. Uh, black does not like uh, these two strong pawns next to each other, so he would want to push c5. Um, so that's what um, he does. He goes c5 and he's hoping to trade them off and um, yeah, so that he get rid he gets rid he gets rid of one of these pawns. Okay. Another question. Why is taking on c5 um, not a good idea for white? Why shouldn't we take on c5? I will get, let you guys think for um, a few seconds. Why is that not a good idea? Because you could just simply trade, right? But it's not really good for white. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. Well, let's let's play the move. Let's go d take c5. How how are you going to take back? How are you going to take back? <clears throat> okay, so you want to take back with your knight. And if you take back with your knight, of course, these this as um both bishop and e4 are under attack. So, this bishop is attacked twice by the queen and by the knight. Also, this pawn is attacked three times and only protected twice. So, well, I guess the, the, the bishop is the more valuable piece um, here. So, he will have to move his bishop and then you simply win the pawn on e4 on the next move. Uh, Let's say bishop goes to c2, um, you can just take the pawn on e4. It's just a free pawn, and black is doing better. And you can see all the pawns are gone in the center. Okay, so that's why white does not take back. Um, white goes instead d5. Um, but here, white sets a little trap. It might be a little bit hard for you guys to know why, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. So, black goes, uh, white goes d5, and black cannot take the pawn, because if you take, okay, you would think you're trading, white takes the pawn, black takes, takes the pawn, white takes the knight, and the bishop takes the knight back. All right, we just trade it, and our position is looking great, because... We have this nice bishop here on the entire um, diagonal. Oh, I wanted to draw an arrow. We have, we have this nice bishop on this diagonal. We have some very nice um, 
pawns on c5, b5, a6, they're looking great. But there's a little, little trick here. Does any one of you know? Um, uh, let me see. Um, <clears throat> Does any one of you see um, the move? Bishop b5, exactly. Very good move. Very good move. Uh, also, hello to Tina in the chat. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, bishop takes b5. Very excellent move. Because why? Well, if black takes back, then white can just simply take the bishop there. And white is just doing much better. Um, because white is much more developed. We have um, the king that's castled and black is still stuck with the bishop on f8. He still can castle. Um, black is having a hard time here. So yes, that's why we do not take the pawn. That's why we don't take the pawn. You have to think a little bit forward. I know that might be hard at first, but if you practice this um, enough, I'll, I'm sure you guys will be good at this. So you don't take the pawn. Instead, um, Vladimir Kremnik went um, c4, attacking the bishop again. So the bishop has already moved like three three times. So we're basically winning another tempo. Um, okay, so the bishop has to move. Bishop goes to c2. And now um, black goes queen c7. Queen 7 is just a developing move. Um, you might wonder why doesn't black just simply develop his bishop and castle? Like, he's, white has, has castled like straight away, but black still hasn't. Why can't black just play a move like, let's say, bishop e7 here? Let's say here he wants to play bishop e7. What, what will happen? What can white play here? <clears throat> e5 d6 mm, well I think there's a better move I think there's a better move um, I can just simply play d6 d6 and now the bishop has to retreat again and black still can't castle um, okay what happens if black goes let's say bishop d6 what happens after bishop d6? But uh, e5, d6 was a good suggestion, but you could have played d6 immediately. So what happens after bishop d6? I'll give you a hint. Look at this, look at this file. Look at this. d takes e6. Very good, Jordan. Very good student. Oh, sorry. Yes, d takes e6. And now the bishop is under attack. And yeah. That's why we don't move our bishop uh, out straight away. Um, instead, Kremnik goes queen c7. And now white goes knight d4. He thinks, all right, I have a very nice outpost on d4. So I'll just place my knight there. Why not? It's looking great. Because my pawn has pushed forward to d5. And now I can simply push, uh, put my knight on um, d4. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, yes, d6, e4, yeah, okay. Oh, now why, uh, black goes knight c5. He's thinking the same. Um, well, I'm just placing my knight on c5. White can't attack me, so why not? Well, ladies and gentlemen, white goes b4, attacking the knight. Okay, so what does black do now? Does he retreat his knight, or is there another option? Is there another option? What does black do here? What should black do in this position? <clears throat> D4? D4? Could you play e6, forking knight and bishop? Uh, what 
where exactly? Sorry. D4. Uh, I don't know what you mean with D4. En passant, en passant, exactly. Very good, very good. Black can take en passant. Yes. Awesome. Because if black retreats his knight to, let's say, D7, then white is simply winning a move um, with D takes E6. And if you take, and then if you take, the knight will just take back, and you lost the pawn. And it's looking very scary for black as well. Okay, so he goes C takes B3 en passant. Excellent. Um, sorry, um, D5 is D5? <laughs> Last position. Well, but the D5, there's already already a pawn on uh, D5. Oh, E5. Oh, E5. Okay, knight D4. You mean here, E5? You mean here, E5? Instead of knight C5, maybe. Well, if you play E5, the problem is um, white has this nice-looking uh, pawn, and it's it's going to be a pass pawn, probably. Um... But I'm not sure where e5 exactly, but um, yeah, let's go nice e5, and um, he takes on b3. All right, uh, white has to take back, trading the pawns, and now black goes for b4. He's basically pushing the knight away. Um, he's pushing the knight away to the edge of the board. And when the knight moves, what, what, can, what can black do? So let's say he goes knight... Um, a4. What does black do now? What does black do now? There's a reason why we pushed c4. We're attacking the knight, but also the knight was a defender. What was the knight defending? Um, takes, yes, t takes on e4, I suppose? Or do you mean take the knight on a4? I guess you mean uh, take on e4. So yeah, the knight can just take the pawn on e4, it's a free pawn, and white just takes back, and black takes back. And now um, white takes the pawn on e6. Um, black can't take back, unfortunately, because uh, white can just take back with the knight, and the king, look at it, the king is so vulnerable. Look how vulnerable the king is. So that's definitely not a good idea. Also, the rook can probably move to e1, and then he has a very nice open file. So as you can see, black is looking a bit... Um, this position is looking a bit scary because he still hasn't castled yet, which he probably should do anytime soon. So we don't take back on e6, that's for sure. Now, finally, black moves his bishop to d6. Finally. Finally, he's developing it, and he can castle on the next move. Um, so now white goes e takes f7 um, with a check, and you simply uh, take back with the queen. Okay. Now white decides to move his pawn to f3 because he wants to attack the knight. The knight is looking uh, very dangerous on e4. Um, he has he's very powerful. He has many squares to go. So Gary decided, okay, let's push f3. But f3 is at the same time a weakness. Um, you're basically weakening your king by pushing this pawn forward. Um, it's good to keep your pawns on h2, um, h2, g2, and f2, just to um, secure your king, secure his safety. But instead, white um, went f3. Okay, now... Um, instead of retreating his knight or moving his knight to another square, Kremnik went for another approach. Kremnik went somewhere else. He did, he did another move. And I'll give you a hint. He wants to counterattack. He wants to counterattack. Keeping, keeping in mind that h2 could be a weakness. So what could black do here in this position? Without moving his knight, what could black do? And keep in mind, you want you want to attack the king. There's there's a reason why you sacrifice your knight. So you do want some counterattack. 
H5 for black, mm, well, H5 is not fast enough, uh, unfortunately. Um, but white will just take the knight and you will be a bit too slow. Queen H5, yes, yes. Yes, Queen H5, that's, that's the move, exactly. Well done, guys. Queen H5, yes. So you're attacking the pawn. So with your queen and with your bishop, you're threatening to take on H2 now. Okay, so um, white cannot take on E4, and I'll show you why. If white takes the knight, it becomes very dangerous, because now, of course, black can just take on h2 um, immediately. It's check. The king has only one square to go. It goes to f2. And now the um, now black will just simply castle with a check. And this king is not safe at all. It will probably be made in a, a few moves. Black is definitely winning here. The king has to move. This pawn is falling on g2. Um, and also this pawn is falling on e4, basically everything is weak. So that is big trouble for white, that's why he doesn't take on e4, because taking on e4 would be a mistake. Okay, it would lose immediately. White goes g3. Reason behind g3 is of course um, preventing uh, the queen to take on h2. So yes, now Kremnik makes a very interesting move. Um, queen to h5, h file, yes, exactly. Very well done, yes. So, Kremnik plays an interesting move. He goes castle, oh my god, castle. But he's still, he's still hanging his knight. So he's just giving up his knight to bring his king into safety, which is very impressive. So, okay. Of course, Gary wants to take the knight. It's a free knight, and I don't think he's a, he's too concerned about um, any mating patterns. He doesn't see it yet. He just takes it. Now, what could Black do here? Um, I'll just tell you. Um, it's it's move Queen H3. Queen. Oh, someone already said it. Awesome. Yes, Queen H3. Very good. Queen H3. Sack first, think later. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, um, black goes queen h3. He wants to put more pressure on uh, the white king. And now, white makes a mistake. Um, actually, in this position, white is doing better because he can just simply protect everything with the move queen e2. Um, it's very essential to uh, bring your queen into the game and protect um, all the gaps. Um, I mean, the queen is a, is a very good attacker, but it's also a great defender. But um, I think Gary underestimated um, the attack on the king side, and he just went for knight f3. On, at first glance, knight f3 looks like a natural move because, well, you're protecting the h2 square, and you're blocking the f-file. So it looks good. Well, not exactly. Because, I'll, I'll let you guys think, why, why is um, knight of three a mistake? Can you see why? Black, of course, he wants, he wants to attack. So what could black do here? Does any one of you know? What could black do in this position? Maybe a sacrifice would be nice, just giving a hint. What could black do here? Okay, I see. I see a correct answer. Bishop takes g3. Um, okay, I see other. Rook takes knight. Rook takes knight. Rook f3. Ah, yeah. Well, we're getting there. Uh, you don't. You, you don't sack your rook straight away. Because oh, just a second. Because. Uh, I think now white can just uh, take back with the queen and everything is just safe. Yeah, now white can just take back and you don't have any any pieces left to go for an attack. So you only, you're only you only left with your queen, this bishop and this bishop. And this rook is not doing anything for now. 
So also these pawns are on h2 and g3, so you can't really take on um, you can't take on h2 because it's blocked by this pawn. So sacking on f3 is uh, is uh, not good right now. But I've heard the correct answer. Um, I've seen the correct answer. It's bishop takes g3. Excellent move. Yes, he's sacrificing on g3. Um, and now. Um, white cannot take back because if white takes back, you take back, of course, with a check. White only has one move, um, king h1, and black can just simply take on e4. And it's just much better for black. Look at it. This knight is attacked uh, three times by the queen, the bishop, the rook. And the king is so unsafe, you can probably mate in a few moves. So that's definitely not um, a good idea to take back, for sure. So he takes on g3 and white goes knight c5 instead of, um, rook takes, uh, instead of h takes g3. Okay, so now my question for you is rook f6... Um, let's see, rook f6, wait, when, when do you want to play rook f6, instead of bishop takes g3? You want to play rook f6 instead of bishop takes g3? Um, yeah, well, after rook f6, I think white can just simply protect everything if he moves his queen out, right? If you go, um, wait, let's see. Um, if you go queen e2, for example. Yeah, maybe, maybe you move like queen e2, like previous variation. Maybe that would defend any, everything. And I don't think, um, now you can't sack anymore in g3 because the queen is, um, probably getting to, uh, g2 and protecting everything. So, I don't know. I don't think, um, rook f6, um, is, um, the right approach here. So... We go bishop takes g3 and white goes knight c5. So my question here was, how do you continue the attack? How do you continue your attack? And keep in mind, you want um, you want to take on h2, but the only problem is that it is defended right now by this guy. So how do you continue this attack? Well, we've already seen it in chat, actually. We've already seen the move, but it wasn't good previous move. <laughs> yes. Rook takes... Yes, yes, exactly. Rook takes f3. Very good. Rook takes f3. You're basically um, removing a defender. So now... Excellent, excellent. Everyone is guessing the move. Very good. Um, so it's rook takes f3, and now white um, decides to take back. Um, okay, so black can just simply take um, on h2 with a check. The king has to move. And now rook takes f3, queen h2, mate. Wait, no, that's, <laughs> that's not a mate. No, it's not a mate because the rook has uh, moved from f1. So there becomes a free square for the king to run off to. So after you take on h2, it's not mate, unfortunately. The king can, can go to uh, f1. He could escape. But um, yeah, now, now is a crucial moment. Now Kremnik makes a very um, excellent move. Um, with the idea of bringing all of his pieces into the game. Because, look at it, you only have your queen um, to attack. Just a second, queen and a bishop. And that's not really enough to um, attack. So you would want to bring more pieces into the game. Um, but which piece sh shall we bring into the game? What should we do here? What should black do here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, Bishop c8, yes, I, I guessed that, that um, some would say that in chat, uh, Bishop, well, Bishop c8, you're, of course, you're, you're threatening mate on uh, h3, right, but 
The only problem is that um, White can checkmate. Checkmate in one uh, on d8. So that's very unfortunate. So that's not a good move. Um, no, but there's there's another diagonal to go for the bishop. Um, so can you guys guess which bishop move? Well, there's only one <laughs> one square to go with um, the bishop. Um, bishop c6, exactly. Bishop c6. Um, with the idea to bring the bishop uh, into the game, um, to go to b5 and checking at the same time. Yes, awesome, awesome. Bishop uh, c6 wins, yeah. Yes, awesome. Yeah, black is doing much better here. Um, bishop c6 is the correct move here. White goes bishop g5. And yeah, he, I guess he just wants to um, develop some pieces, maybe bringing the rook. Um, but it's a bit too late here. It's a bit too late. He maybe could have played... No, I think it's already too late here for white. So white goes bishop g5 and now black uh, goes bishop um, b5. Yes, bishop b5 with a check. And now um, white has to move a piece in between, of course. So, yes, bishop b5. Awesome. Great. Yes. So white has to move a bishop in between because uh, all the squares are um, covered by black. And now he has to play a move like knight d3. Well, rook d3 doesn't really work because it's made in one. Um, so yeah, knight d3, now we play a move, oh, now we have an interesting move, um, it's a very quiet move, I'll, I'll let you guys think, um, what move, it's a very quiet move, so keep in mind, you want to bring all of your pieces into the game, if you're going for an attack, as, as many pieces as you can, so what piece, what other piece can we bring into the game, tell me, what other piece? <laughs> rook a7. No, not exactly. Not rook a7. <laughs> uh, rook d8. No, uh, if you go rook d8, then I can just take the rook. You're losing your rook. So not rook d8, not rook a7. <laughs> rook a5, it's black to move. Um, rook f8. Ah, no, not rook f8. You, I don't think you would want to trade in this position. You want to use, you want to have as many pieces as you can, so you definitely don't want to trade here. You don't want to trade here. Um, yeah, if you go rook f8, um, he's just going to take it. So, no, it's, uh, yes, yes, I see many good answers. It's rook e8, rook e8. Attacking this e4 pawn, because after you take it, um, the entire e file becomes uh, free. Entire, entire file. All right. So the idea is just to take on e4. Okay. A very good move. Um, now white goes rook a2. Well, of course, black could take the rook because it's a free rook. Um, possibly the idea of rook a2 is to um, to seduce the queen to take the rook so that so that there's less pressure on the king. But black does not care about that. Black doesn't take it. Black played something else. Um, he went for queen h1 check. But, but, there's a big but. Um, Kramnik, unbelievably, he missed mate and four here. Can you guys spot the mate and four? Um, so, yeah, prove that you're stronger than the one and only Vladimir Kramnik and show me the mate and four in this position because he missed it. He missed it. So I will give you guys some time. I'll give you some minutes to think about this. And we will uh, look at it together then. So I'll let you guys think. Mate and four. Yes, I'm reading your comments. Um, I'm reading. Just give me give me some suggestions, and uh, I will look at them. <clears throat> mm. 
Okay, I um, give me an entire entire calculation because one move is not enough. When you're playing a, an on the board game, you will probably have to calculate things moves in your head. So just one move is not enough. You have to think forward. Like what happens if I play this? What does white play? What do I do next? Where's the mate? So you have to think forward. You have to think forward. Okay, I'm seeing some um, variations. Queen h1, king e2. Mm, rook takes e4. That's yeah. That's that's not mate and four. Many of you think queen h1, right? Because it's a, it's an immediate check. Okay, I'll give you the first move. I'll give you the first move. The first move is bishop takes d3. Check. This is the first move. So now, um. Okay, now there's only one move, queen takes, uh, or no, rook takes <laughs> d3, because after queen, um, after queen takes just a second, then there's mate in two, because you have queen h1, and then you have checkmate. So, yeah, then we have rook takes d3, so now, um, now there's mate in three. Okay, bishop takes d3, yes. Yes, we don't take back with the queen because then it's made in two, but we take back with the rook. What happens now? What happens now? We take with the rook. No, this is not made in one. If you're if you're looking at queen f2 mate, that's not possible because there's a rook um, on a2. Rook c1? Ah, no, it's not rook c1. Okay, I'll give you the answer. It's queen h1 now. So it was first taken on d3, and now we're playing queen, we're playing queen h1 with a check. Then the king, um, rook f8. Yeah, many of you think rook f8. Yeah, this, this, might, this, this might be a hard maiden for. So you go queen h1 with a check. There's a force move, um, king e2. And now, okay, now it's mate in two. I will let you guys think about this. Where's the mate in two here? Where's the mate in two here? Now it's a bit easier. It's a bit easier. <clears throat> yeah, with rook f8, you can just put some pieces in between. Um, but yeah. So where's the mate in two, guys? Can you spot it? Can you spot it? Queen g7, I think you mean queen g2, queen g2, queen g2, yes, 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 awesome, awesome, you guys are geniuses, you're, you prove you're better than Kramnik, <laughs> so queen g2, and the king only has one move to go, that's king e3, and now we have rook takes e4, checkmate, but unfortunately he missed his mate in four, it even happens to the best, so instead he played queen h1 checked, um, like you guys suggested, it's also a winning move, but why would you play um, a winning move when you can make um, um, a, a deciding to gain move, <laughs> let's say. Okay, he only has one um, square to go, so that's king e2, and now we take on e4. So, look at this position. Black has all the pieces cooperated, they're all working together, the bishop is... Uh, looking at this uh, this diagonal, the rook is looking at this entire uh, file, this bishop is looking at the king, the queen is uh, is attacking, so all the pieces are attacking the white king. Awesome. So, white can only go to one square, uh, that's d2, but what, okay, I have a question, what happens after bishop e3? What happens after bishop e3? What happens? Um, yeah. What happens here? It's made in two. Made in two. Can you guys see it? Yes! Awesome! Queen g2. Yes, because look at it. The bishop is pinned. He can't move his bishop in between. Also, the knight is pinned because this bishop is looking at this diagonal. So he can't really move um, these pieces in between. So the only move uh, to prevent checkmate is rook f2 and then you take and it's checkmate. Awesome! Awesome! Okay, um, so white goes king d2 and um, black goes queen g2 check. 
keeps on checking. Uh, all the pieces are uh, involved in the game and they're ready to attack. And the king is not is nowhere safe. He's, he has nowhere to go. He cannot hide. Um, so he goes king c1. And now, well, the queen can just take the rook and we're winning our material back. Because, yeah, we were a rook down and now we want it back. Awesome. Uh, white takes the bishop. But it doesn't really help because black is still completely late, completely winning, uh, I meant to say. And now black goes queen a1 check. King has to go to yeah, c2. Um, it's not checkmate. Knight can take. No, no, look at it. No. Um, so if you move your bishop in between uh, and you go check, you can't move your knight in between because this bishop is um, pinning a knight. So if you move your knight, which is an illegal move, then the king is uh, in check. So that doesn't really work. Also, uh, same works for this bishop. If you move this bishop, well, that's also an illegal move. Also, um, also if you play a move like rook e3, oh, sorry, oh, rook e3, then we have queen g2 checkmate. So we cannot move our knight in between, we cannot move a rook in between, the only move was king d2. Okay. Um, so where was I? Yeah, queen c3 check. The king only has one um, squ square to go, and that's on uh, b1. And now black goes uh, rook d4. That's the last move black played here in this position. And unfortunately, Gary Kasparov, the one and only, um, one and only legend, gave up in this position because everything is falling. The knight cannot be defended. The knight cannot move because the queen uh, is hanging, and black will probably checkmate um, very shortly. All right, do you guys have uh, any questions uh, about this game? Any moves you didn't understand? Um, any moves you want to look at again? Um, if not, I still have a little puzzle for you guys, which is very fun. Always puzzles. Bishop d3, rook e1 does not win. Uh, where exactly? Bishop d3, rook e1. Where exactly? Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, sorry, I don't really know wh where exactly. Instead of rook d4, uh, where do we play? Ah, uh, rook d4. At the end. Uh, so you want to play rook takes d3. Uh, bishop takes d3. Uh, bishop takes d3. No, bishop takes d3, then, then just rook takes d3, right? Yes. And then it's, I think it's just... Maybe... Maybe it's just equal, because we have a bishop against three pawns, so I think it should be pretty equal, or maybe white is better, because, well, the queen and the rook are now um, covering each other, and there are checks, and yeah, my, white might be better here, um, so no, we are not taking a knight, we, 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 don't, we don't want to trade if, if you can just simply win the knight, um, so yeah, okay. Okay, so I still have a little puzzle for you guys. I have a little puzzle. Okay. Okay, so this was a game played uh, on the Legends of Chess tournament between Kremnik again against um, Boris Gelfand. Also a very uh, strong player. And, um, okay, in this position, White played King C5. So Boris went King C5. All right? So I want you to look at this position and um, find the best move for black because king c5 was a blunder by white. So I want you guys to find the best move in this position. So I'll I'll wait I will I'll I will wait a few minutes for your answer and we can check some uh, variants uh, together. Mm-hmm. 
rook f8 doesn't really work. I think you mean rook c1. <laughs> <clears throat> mm hmm mm hmm okay I see I see some good answers which side are the pieces moving ah upwards so black is going um, this direction and white is going in this direction Okay, okay. Mm, okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what you guys are saying. So, rook c1. I've seen rook c1 um, a few times. Okay, so rook c1 check. Oh, sorry. Rook c1 check is not really um, the move we're looking for because, well, the king will probably just move back. The king will just go there and, well, it's not really doing anything. So we will have to look at another move. Um, uh, yes, yes. Okay, I see the good move. I see the correct move. So the correct answer here is um, knight a5. Knight a5. Um, why? Well, simply because you're attacking the rook. One, you're attacking the rook, and two, you're threatening to go to b3. And once you're on b3, you're attacking the king and the rook. So that's a fork. So it's a double attack. A double attack leading to a double attack, which is pretty awesome, right? So yeah, after knight f5, um, white could simply make a move like, yeah, let's say rook a7, and then you play knight b3, and you're just winning the rook on b2. So that, that was a very big blunder of a Boris by playing king c5. Um, another move could be rook dd7. If black takes this, you can take back. And it's equal material, but of course now it's black's move and he can just take this pawn. And black is a pawn up, uh, two pawns up actually. Yes, black is two pawns up here. So black is just uh, winning in this position. Okay. Um... So I want you guys to look for a better move for white. So obviously king c5 was a blunder because knight a5 is coming. But what better move could white have played instead? Uh, give me some suggestions. There are no wrong answers. Um, just give me some suggestions what white could have played to uh, avoid this threat. <clears throat> oh, I see bishop takes c6. I see bishop takes c6. Okay. Um, you would think you're, you're winning the knight, but not exactly. What happens after bishop takes c6? What happens? What happens? It's not a good move. Black has something um, he can do here. So why is bishop takes c6 not uh, a good move here? Black is not going to take back on c6. Yes, exactly. Yes, we have a fork on c4. We have a fork. So white cannot take on c6. Um, we had rook c7. Rook c7 is a good move. Rook c7 is a good move because you're threatening to take on... Um, uh, c6 with your rook instead of your bishop and once you take with your rook um, then black is going to take back and you simply take back and your bishop up so rook c7 is a good move that's a good option that is indeed a good option um, what else are you guys saying Night pork. <laughs> we're not talking about pork here. We're talking about fork. <laughs> um, 
Um, rook c1. No, it's uh, it's white's move here. Because uh, white played king c5, and that was a blunder. Because uh, knight a5 is coming and threatening, of course, um, this double attack on b3. So now it's black to move. Now it's... Uh, uh, white to move. Sorry, it's white to move here, because he can't play king c5. So now it's white to move. Um, what about a3 after rook c7? Uh, okay, rook c7. Oh, sorry. A3. A3 is a move. A3 is a move for sure. Um, so let's say we play a3. Um, then white is pro probably gonna take it back because you don't want uh, white doesn't want this pawn to promote to a queen, right? So white is most likely to take it, oh, take it back. Um, yeah, white is white is just uh, white is still winning here. So yeah, a three is, is is a move, but white can just take it back. Um, bishop d two. Wait, where? Oh, wait, bishop e two. Um, bishop e two. Okay, um, bishop e2, what, where do you want to go exactly with your bishop? Where do you exactly want to go? What's the idea of bishop e2? Um, yeah, um, so now we could play a move like a3, right? <clears throat> and... Yeah, you can't take it back. No. No, bishop bishop e2 is not a good move because then then a3. And then you can you can't take it back and then a2 is coming. So I don't think bishop e2 um is a good move. Um, bishop takes a4. Ah, okay. Bishop. Okay. These are these are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, optional moves. Okay. I think bishop takes a4 um, is also possible. Um, but then, um, yeah. Now you still have knight c4 check. Knight c4 check. The king has to move, and then you take there. But um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Um, so the king is going to take the knight probably, and then you take there, and it looks pretty equal to me. It looks pretty equal to me. Okay, I don't think white wants to lose his advantage. Um, I don't think white wants to lose his advantage. So, okay, the best move here was, um, oh, sorry, rook g2. Um, so... This looks crazy, but the idea is, okay, now maybe you can move your king to c5, and and if knight a5 next, well, there's no threat on b3. And you're still attacking the, the, the rook on b7, but there's no threat on b3 anymore. So rook g2, I know it looks like a weird move, but it is the best move in this position, and you're basically removing your, your rook from uh, the battlefield, let's say, and there are no threats anymore for black. So yeah. Um, any more suggestions? Um, yeah, bishop takes e4, knight c4, exactly. But then it's pretty drawish, um, as we saw after calculating. Um, knight f3 at the end hits h2. When exactly? King, H5, uh, King a5... Um, Rook d5, okay. Um, I mean, now, wait, now king a5 is not possible because uh, the knight is um, protecting the a, the a5 square. Um, king a6, king a6, okay, yeah, that's possible. You're also, um, you're moving your king, wait, let me... You're moving your king out of the way. It, it, it could be a move, yes. It could be a move. Bishop takes knight. Oh, we already discussed that. Maybe you weren't here already. But after bishop takes the knight, then we have knight c4. Very sneaky move. We have knight c4 and there's just simply a double attack 
on d4 and the king. And it's just game over. It is game over. Um, <laughs> um, uh, bishop to, oh, that's, that's a long variation. Um, I mean here, bishop, oh, sorry. Bishop takes a four, knight c4 check, king takes c6, okay, knight takes e2. Some, <laughs> some white move, ah, okay. Well, some white move could be, for example, b4 and running with a pawn, I think. And then knight of three, well, of course, you're hitting the pawn, but you can still, I mean, this pawn is just very strong. I think you can just simply run with this pawn. I think you shouldn't even care about the h2 pawn because this is just a free and pass pawn. So I think you could even just um, run with this guy and don't care about this pawn at all. So, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, guys. That was... Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed um, the game um, we discussed between Kramnik and um, Gary Kasparov. And I hope you enjoyed this little puzzle. Um, let me know if you... Uh, found it uh, educational or if, it, if I went too fast, if I went too slow. Um, yeah, I, uh, I tried my best and... Um... <laughs> okay, chat. Okay. Um, that's, um, that's today's lesson. Um, I hope to see you again um, on another lesson. And um, yeah. Okay. See you. <laughs>